the epicenter for coronavirus was Huan. From Huan, the coronavirus has spreaded all across the world. Till the end of January, the coronavirus has spreaded to Thailand, Vietnam, Singapore, Australia, France, and US in these regions. And at the end of February, the situation is detrimental because the spread is almost global from India, almost all part of the Europe and Middle East, USA, South America, all of the places are now having cases with coronavirus. And it is taking a shape of a global pandemic. And who has announced it as a a high risk situation right now? Now the virus threat in India is also high because almost 34 cases has been detected in past few days. And in those, most of the cases are in Delhi, Hyderabad, Kerala, Tamil Nadu, Jaipur, etc. So let us know in this video that how coronavirus testing works and how we can say that you are infected by the coronavirus and your test is confirmatory. So watch this video till the end. We know that coronavirus mainly affect your upper respiratory tract your lung and cause pneumonia, which is a key factor or key symptom in coronavirus infection. But how would you know that you are infected or not? Let's say you have a common cold versus you have corona. How would you delineate between these two? Is there any confirmatory test that you can do? Or in case you are having symptoms like common cold, what you can do possibly? So let's see. In order to understand that, we need to understand the virology a little bit more details. So the coronavirus enters our lung epithelial cell via a particular receptor called angiotensin converting enzyme 2 receptor. So it can enter via endocytotic pathway. So it'll just take up the virus with this interaction with this receptor. After it's in, it would affect the body. But in this video, our main goal is to understand how to detect the presence of coronavirus. Now, coronavirus having a genetic material which is RNA in nature. It's a plus strand RNA. Apart from the genetic material, there are envelope proteins, there are S proteins, there are E proteins and M proteins, which are all accessory proteins which are important for the viral survival. Now, what we need to know is the viral genome encodes for all of these protein. So if the virus is there inside your body, you can at least detect the RNA corresponding to these enzymes or these proteins. Among the most important proteins that the virus need for its survival is encoded by ORF1A and ORF1B region, which encodes for the replicase, which is important for the viral DNA replication. Other than that, the E protein or the envelope protein is important for the viral propagation and survival because it interacts with the entry receptor for the cell. Other than that, many other proteins such as membrane protein encoded by M region or N region, these are all important. If we are able to detect any one of these fragments or a combination of these fragments in a patient sample, that means possibly the patient is infected by the virus. Because otherwise, these things are not supposed to be detected in a patient sample. So let's see how we can detect coronavirus using real-time quantitative PCR analysis. Real-time PCR analysis, in short, is a technique by which you can understand certain RNA or certain transcripts are present in a sample or not. It can also tell how much it is present and what is the relative proportion of it. Now, what is the, but using real-time real PCR, which fragments we are going to detect? And there are specific guidelines for that. There are many fragments which are ranging in ORF1B or a portion of the E protein. These can be detected. And several institutes or several uh, research laboratories across the world has used primers against specific regions, such as China used ORF1B and ORFN, whereas Germany used a different kind of PCR strategy. But all of these strategies are dedicated to detect a portion of the viral genome 
present in the sample or not. Now, every country has their own way of doing it, but everybody is destined to detect the presence of the viral genome. Now, in order to detect that, generally the healthcare officials takes your blood or sputum sample, then RNA is extracted from that. Now, the total RNA is converted to complementary DNA. Imagine you have a viral RNA which is present in your sample, which is marked here in yellow. So, the viral RNA would also be converted to cDNA. Later on, you use specific primers to amplify portion of these cDNA. Now, if the cDNA is not present, then the amplification would not take place. And that can be absolutely and quantitatively detected by real-time PCR. Real-time PCR out of real-time PCR is very accurate and it works by a simple principle. It uses a cyber green chemistry, cyber green dye-based chemistry. A cyber green is a dye which when does not bind to a DNA has no fluorescence. But when it binds to DNA or a double-stranded DNA, it fluoresces. Now, as the PCR cycle moves on, there are many, many cybergreen molecules which are binding to the new amplified DNA and the signal amplifies over time. So, if you have too much of the viral RNA, quickly the signal would be amplified and you would detect it by the monitoring the change of fluorescent levels. And that is how you can understand whether a person is infected by the virus because at least you would get a positive signal for this virus infected person and the viral mRNA would be detected in this real-time PCR assay. So you can detect a fold change from a control sample versus a patient sample. The e-protein transcript level or the RDP transcript level would be several folds higher than a control person who is non infected which is who, who is not infected than the infected person. And that is how the health officials would be confirmed that you are affected by the coronavirus or not. But few things we can do. If we think that we are affected or we came in contact with some person who has a travel history from a region of the world where coronavirus was spreading badly, then we should not go to a crowded environment. We should self-quarantine ourselves because this can not only uh, the virus can not only spread in form of droplets, but it can also spread in form of contact. Contacting surface or handshakes, these things can allow this virus to spread. Now, the information that you should know is the helpline number for coronavirus, which is given here, and also the supportive email. And if you think if you think that you're infected, you can always drop them an email or ask them for help. And wearing proper mask and isolation in proper bed in hospitals are the only way to fight coronavirus right now. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Thank you.